Bismillah <laughs> لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سار على نهجهم واقتدى بسنتهم وهديهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are and we are at the end of our series of خطبة entitled Immigration and Integration الهجرة والإندماج It's a series that took us from us يعني around two years in this blessed masjid, alhamdulillah. And we discovered in this series the most important strategic work of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companions over the course of 10 years in the Medina. The work in building the Muslim community identity, the work in da'wah and reform in all aspects of life, such as the moral, social, educational, media, political, economic, health, environment, etc. And also we saw how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu interacted with all the different groups of the Medina society, Muslims and non-Muslims, while he balanced the preservation of Islamic identity. My dear respected brothers and sisters, today I plan to highlight some of the top lessons that could took and it could take from me and in multiple of, of khutbah, because I have different lessons as يعني, a lessons for the whole series. So, lessons from the Hijra series that I covered in the last two years of our beloved, Muhammad, of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and how to reflect that on our reality here in Canada. But you know today, due to the conflict, and the conflict that is escalating and that is happening right now in Palestine, what I will do to balance these things, I will only talk about one lesson today from the Hijra. Uh, series and the rest of the khutbah inshallah the second part of the khutbah I will try to highlight some of the ideas share with you some of the ideas regarding our role over here in Canada how to do that type of nusrah for uh, our brothers and sisters and what's happening in Palestine so let's start with the first lesson which is I learned from the Hijra series one of the most important lessons when you look closely to the Hijra of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and you find it as a trend that the immigration, the meaning of immigration is basically it's like a practical action and a declaration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greater, is greater than anything. That's what's behind all the actions that we do, whether we immigrate from one place to another. Basically, it's a declaration and it's a practical action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything. And for his sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslim will sacrifice everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than our countries and the land that we grew in and we love. And I learned that 
from the action of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he left Mecca going to the Medina he looked back at Mecca at night and he said ma atgadaki min balad wa ahabbaki ilayhi wa lawla anna qawmi akhrajuni minki ma sakantu ghayraki the meaning of that you are the most beloved country to me and I wouldn't reside in another place if your people did not kick me out. So it's greater than our countries. Allah, for his sake, we sacrifice, sacrifice even our countries. Also immigration is a declaration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than our money, assets, and trade that we worked hard to build over years. And I learned that clearly from Suhaib Rumi, for example. When he migrated, the Kuffar, they followed him in his road, and they stopped him, and they said, أَتَيْتَنَا سُعْلُوكًا فَقِيرًا فَكَتُرَ مَالُكَ عِنْدَنَا وَبَلَغْتَ مَا بَيْنَنَا مَا بَلَغْتَ وَالْآنْ تَنْطَلِقُ بِنَفْسِكَ وَمَالِكَ The meaning of it, they said to him, you came to us poor and made a great fortune, and now you want to go with the money? So immediately, Suhaib al-Rumi, without hesitant, now it's a trading between leaving him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for his money. So he said, if I told you about the location where I hid my money, would you leave me to immigrate safely? So they said, yes. So he told them and they returned immediately to Mecca. Even they believe him. They didn't let somebody over there to go and check and the rest they go and check. All of them, they believe that he is telling the truth. And subhanAllah, he continued his trip. And the minute that he arrived to the Medina, the Prophet وسلم, at that time he was at Quba. He was still like, didn't move from Quba inside the Medina. It was the first two weeks of the arrival of Prophet Muhammad So the minute that he saw Suhaib al-Rumi, he stood up and he walked to him. And he said, Rabbi hal bayu Aba Yahya. Rabbi hal bayu Aba Yahya means profitable trade, Aba Yahya. Profitable trade, Aba Yahya. So always keep in mind that immigration, the immigration of Sahib al-Rumi over here when we are here in Canada, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than our money, our assets and trade that we work hard to build over the years. Don't ever do the opposite over here. Don't do the opposite. Even the company, compa companions, the Sahaba, when they did that type of sacrifice, they were doing it initiated from love and satisfaction, not from sadness and pain. Listen to Umm Aisha, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, when she was describing her father, Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he got the news that he was accompanying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his immigration. She said, at that time she was around 99 years old, she was young. So she said, I did not realize before that day a person that could cry from joy, cry from joy, until I saw my father Abu Bakr crying. Was Abu Bakr crying for, from joy or for joy because he's going to a journey of death? Or because he's going to leave his wealth and trade and rich status behind his back in Mecca? or because his status will change from a wealthy, respected man in his people in Mecca to a wanted man within a few minutes when he takes the decision to go with the Prophet Muhammad Within minutes, it will change that status to become a dead or alive for a hundred camel brides. Within minutes. Abu Bakr's cry of joy was based on love and satisfaction, not sadness and pain. He cries because he got the chance, he got the chance to sacrifice all that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was willing to do that again and again and again. And this is where the hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتُ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ This hadith came in these type of immigrations, in these concepts of immigration where you sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the core meaning of the immigration. Immigration in Islam is not just deserting one place to another. 
It's not moving object from one place to another, no. It's more deeper than that. The reason behind your movement, the reasons behind your sacrifice. It is mainly deserting anything haram for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his pleasure. Listen to Abdullah ibn Habshi when he asked the Prophet sallallahu about the best hijrah, which hijrah, which immigration is the best of Prophet Muhammad. So he said, who desert what Allah forbids on him, yani man hajra ma haram Allah That's the best type of hijrah. So in this concept, in that concept that I describe right now, you will see that hijrah is wajib on all of us. And it's actually a practice that you do it every day, in every decision that you take. It's in every hour and even in every second. You take the decision of hijrah. Where you desert everything that angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. You desert the company of the bad friends for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a type of immigration. You desert the haram income, the haram sight, the haram food, the haram relations, the haram money, the haram word. All these are different forms of immigration that you are doing it in a daily basis. Even the hijrah, the immigration, goes further than that, further than that, by deserting our comfort zone to the da'wah work, deserting something halal, just for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as deserting your sleep for qiyam al-layl. I'm not talking about deserting your sleep not to go to the fajr prayer. Fajr is wajib. But I'm talking even about sunnah, making qiyam al-layl. You are deserting your comfort, your sleep, to do the qiyam. Also, the joy of food, to do the yani, siyam, the sunnah, not the fard. All these are form of daily immigration that, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to activate in our lives. That was the first lesson that I learned from the hijrah, which is an important lesson. But also, inshallah, in the coming few khutbah, we will talk about other deeper lessons also. And uh, inshallah, I will share it with you next month. Asallallahu azza wa jalla in yufaqihna fi deenina wa in yaj'alna mimma yuhyuna sunnat nabiyina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi jami' qulub al-muslimin ala ta'atih wa al-usrati deenah wa mimma marjahu fi kulli umurihim kitab Allah wa sunnat rasulah innahu alayhi wa dhalika wal qadir alayh qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah alayhi wa lakum fa astaghfiru fa fawza al-mustaghfirin Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walah, wa man sara ala najihim wa qtada bi sunnatihim wa adihim ilayhum al-deen amma ba'a. My dear respected brothers and sisters, as you all know, Palestine is the home of al-Masjid al-Aqsa, the second house of worship that has been built after, يعني, following Mecca, Masjid Mecca. And it's for us as the Muslims, it's the first qibla to Islam. So it means a lot for us as a Muslims, as a nation of Islam. It's the destination of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in his journey of Al-Isra Al-Miraj. So it has a lot of meanings. And for many decades, we see through the history that the Palestinian people have endured the Israeli oppression, including the ongoing clashes and the, the dis desecration of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. The occupation also of sovereign the land for more than 75 years and the ethnic cleansing and building illegal settlements. All these things you should put it part of what's happening today. It's important to put it in context. The 16 years of blockade on Gaza that generations has been يعني, raised in that type of environment, that it became the largest open air prison. This is part of the problem. And lately putting Gaza under a full siege that the wounded have no treatment and aid has been shut off 
from all directions, from all directions. And they have been cut off from electricity. We are talking about that in, in, in the 21st century. Cutting off from electricity, the supply of food and water now is running out. Whoever is doing that, whoever is supporting that, whoever is promoting that, whether regardless of his religion, his race, his nationality, even if he's a Canadian, whoever is supporting that type of action should belong to the Dark Ages, not to the 21st century. There is a growing hypocrisy that we see it right now and double standards in the stance of the Canadian politicians, the Canadian leaders. They must acknowledge that all you know, humans live it hold equal worth. And be careful. One of the things that we have to pay attention to it in our solutions, in our contribution, and this is what the media they are trying to, 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 to do over here, that they want to get the story outside the context. What I mean by that? The context of people and the context of time. They shrink that type of conflict only to Hamas, to a group of people. And not to talk about the Palestinian. It's not anymore the conflict of the Palestinian. Or not anymore the context or, or the, the conflict of the Ummah of Islam because of our ownership for the Al-Aqsa and, and other places. And even they remove it from the humanity context. So it's important when we tackle this issue and talk about it, return it to the humanity context, to the Ummah context. And especially when we are talking with the people, return it to the humanity context and tell them it's not only a group of people. It's not only the Palestinian issue. And regarding the time, they want to shrink it only to that one specific incident, starting only as if the conflict starting only from the 7th of October. And that's unfair. And this is illogic, the way that you describe the problem. Actually, if I go to a doctor and I told them that I have this specific symptom, without looking at my history record, do you believe that type of doctor? So any type of leaders, they believe that and promote that, they shouldn't be even our leaders over here. And we shouldn't give them our votes. During these tiring times, I urge our community to place their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to pray for the safety of our brothers and sisters and everybody and, and, and the restoration of justice all over the places. The unity, one of the most important things in this type of crisis, the unity of, is our strength. And as one ummah, it is critical to come together during the crisis to think, to act, and to work together, and that to increase the work effectiveness, our work effectiveness. And it doesn't mean that you don't even do the job from your, your, your individual, as an individual, and contribution as an individual, but we need that type of collaboration and work together, in organizing things together. We must voice the truth and to stand for justice courageously, and we should advocate for the Palestinian cause by raising awareness among our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors from even the non-Muslims and even our local MPs and the social media, through the social media and wherever is possible. Especially we have to hold accountable all the MPs that we elected them and they come over here to the masjid asking for our votes. We should hold them accountable and we should ask them what they did to us. Also, right now, we are talking about elections. So it's good to use this method to measure those type of leadership. And to show them and to tell them that these type of attitudes, these type of values that they are promoting, it's danger actually on the Canadian uh, citizens over here. If you believe in these type of values and these type of, you know, uh, ideologies and these type of, you know, uh, siege that you do to the people, so how am I going to trust you to lead, my, my, uh, to lead us over here? You will do the same thing. So they should have this clear message from us. 
and they should know that it will affect their nomination and their leadership. Muslim must distinguish, very important, especially in the, in the rallies. Muslim must distinguish between the state of Israel, the political Zionism, versus the, the Judaism and the Jewish people who are our neighbors and our colleagues here in Canada. Don't mix up this. When we are talking, we are talking about the Zionists, the racism, and whoever is accepting that, regardless of his nationality, some Arabs, they are taking that, and they are accepting that type of model. Some Muslims, they are accepting that type of model. So we're against that, whoever his race or his religion is. But we're not taking a stand from a specific religion. No, this is not part of Islam, not part of the seerah that we talked about of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, public, prote publicly protesting must be displayed with best Islamic morals and manners and must be yani, avoid the hateful slur uh, slurs and comments to the community, to any community. Also, donate and support the humanitarian response to the crisis and continuously make dua for the Palestinian brothers and sisters, particularly after yani, every salah and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them an ease in their suffering and to end the occupation. And also I urge the masajid, the, the centers, to make a special programs for the Muslim youth because they are so, yani they don't know a lot about that case. So it's important to teach them and also to do some programs for the non-Muslims, to do open houses, not even in the masajid, also to do it in, in the universities. This is a, a proper time to do that type of education and to extend that type of communication to the people. Inna Allah wa malaykatahu wa salluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallam wa taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa sallim taslima kathira. Allahumma jajal ishtima'an hadha ishtima'a marhuma. Wajal tafarruqana min ba'di tafarruqan ma'asuma. ولا تجعل فينا ولا من بيننا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اعتق رقابنا ورقاب أبائنا وأمهاتنا من النار وأزواجنا وذرياتنا وجميع المسلمين اللهم صر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعلي بحقك كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذوا أخذ عزيز مقتدر فإنهم لا يعجزوك اللهم أعن إخواننا في فلسطين وثبت أقدامهم وسدد رميهم واغفر ذنبهم وارحم شهداءهم وأعنا يا ربي على أن نكون نصرة لهذا الدين ونصرة لهذه القضية يا رب العالمين ونصرة لقضية كل مظلوم في كل أصقاع الأرض اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كل عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعادك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربة وإن عال الفحشاء والمنكر والبر يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة